All right, we're in the book of Mark, chapter 1. And I didn't realize this, but today is Halloween. Today is October 31st. Oh, the candy, the candy. Oh, how I love candy. But really, when you think about it, what is a date in the calendar to God Almighty? I mean, we can put all kinds of dates on the calendar, can't we? But really, if you think about it, God invented time, didn't he? And he's going to end time. Time is not forever. Time is a gift that we have. We can have all kinds of calendar dates. And when the calendar date is over and there's no more time, it won't matter what humans think about any date. God has in, uh, control of all the dates. And really, you could say the gospel really is an anti-calendar. It's supernatural. It's beyond time. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And we hold in our hands really the miracle of God's point of view. When we hold the Bible and we read the gospel, it's God's point of view about this whole world. And it is important. God's word. And if you read the book of Mark, Mark starts out highlighting or lighting high the authority of Jesus Christ. And how powerful that is. Now Mark you know, speaks about Jesus differently than Matthew or Luke and John because he just goes real fast. Not a lot of details in Mark. He just whips right through. And we can read the very beginning where Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist. Remember, John the Baptist, the whole reason he came was to show who Jesus is and to reveal the authority of the Christ. Remember that God came down from heaven. This is my son whom I love with him. I am well pleased. And then after that, Satan tested Jesus in the book of Mark. And read that. And how do you test the authority of the second person of the Trinity? It didn't last very long, did it? That, that authority. The authority overpowered Satan. Then Jesus proclaims that the kingdom of God is near on his authority. Then he begins to choose out apostles, disciples. So things are heating up. And the authority of Jesus gets revealed in a powerful way in Mark chapter 1, verse 21 says this, they went to, you know, his disciples are with him, they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Can you imagine that happening? A demon possessed man crying that out, interrupting everything. And look what Jesus says. Be quiet. Verse 25. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all amazed. They get amazed quite a bit, don't they, with Jesus? The people are all amazed. And they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. The news about Jesus spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Jesus started teaching in the synagogue. The people, it says in verse 22, were amazed at his teaching because he taught with them as one who had authority, not like the, the teachers of the law. Now, nothing wrong with the teachers of the law. They're trying to do the best they can, but, but look who's teaching. This is an accreditation alert. The second person of the Trinity. How do you accredit to him authority? And he comes, we don't even understand that authority, but it comes from the throne of God. And he's teaching. He took on flesh in the second person of Trinity is in person teaching. Now this whole world is full of teachers, isn't it? Some of them we don't realize they're teachers, but they do. I mean, we have the culture that teaches us, doesn't it? Be like us. We're surrounded by it. Culture pressure. We have the media that teaches constantly. They want to mediate for us, don't they? Get in the middle and stand between the truth and us and, and give us the truth. We have uh, peer pressure that teaches. We have political teachers. We have advertising teachers. Everyone around us is teaching us something. We are surrounded by those who want to teach us. And it's the same old, same old, nothing changes since Genesis 3. It's been going on. Now Jesus enters the world with some authority that shocks the people. Not same old, same old anymore, is it? Something new. And they're shocked and amazed at his authority. The definition of authority is simply is this. You have the authority or the power to authorize 
something, right? I want this to happen. You authorize it. So he's authorizing teaching from the kingdom of God that people have never heard before, and, and it's hitting their hearts, and they're amazed. The authority. What kind of authority does Jesus have? He's the, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He's eternal with the Father. He took on flesh to dwell among us. You can get no higher authority than Jesus Christ. Nothing outside of this, nothing exists outside of this world that Jesus does not have uh, authority over. He, he has authority over everything in this world. No wonder the people were amazed. They knew something was different. What if Jesus taught today in the U.S. Senate? What if he taught today in the House of Representatives? What, well, we're going to get to that point. <laughs> what, what if he taught in our social media platforms? Just jumped in. Think anybody would be amazed? Oh, they would be amazed. How about our TV, our internet? How amazing. But there's a problem. The number one problem is he, his, God has given people free will. So they've got to tune in. If you don't tune in, he's not going to teach. You're not going to get his teaching. Isn't that true? I mean, we have a lot of empty seats here. People could tune in and like they're supposed to and get, get the word of God. And it, one of the reasons we meet together is to encourage one another. And it's a powerful uh, ministry for the church. This church would be overflowing. We'd have to build, uh, have Don Jones build uh, room additions because it'd be so, so, uh, so many people here. But you got to tune in. The second thing is, P, uh, Jesus might be declared illegal. You can't be teaching that here. Isn't that true? Our nation is doing that very thing today. I mean, it, it really, literally, the church is illegal today, but they just haven't pressed it yet. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it's the G3 syndrome multiplying itself. We will run things. We are in charge, not you, God. We live in a fallen world and a fallen humanity, but praise God, there exists in the middle of this something that can amaze us, and that's the miracle of the authority of Jesus Christ. Anyone can tune in. Just got to bow. You can tune in. Submit to his authority. And then suddenly Jesus becomes legal. He legalizes all kinds of things in our lives. That, and, and at the same time we're set free in him. But legally it's, a, it's an amazing thing. And then we will be amazed. And constantly amazed. He wants us to be amazed. He will spread his authority over our personal lives. But See, Jesus doesn't change over time. His, e his authority is eternal. Right now, it's hidden in this world, but it's in our lives. But when he comes back, everybody's going to know about his authority, correct? Yeah. The second coming of Christ, but it would be too late then. Jesus can enter any person's life and bring change if they just open the door. We will line up more and more with him. He'll line us up into his teaching. We'll become improved. We'll become what's called disciples. We'll become children of God. There'll be blessing after blessing. But you have to bow. Many in this world have no idea who Jesus is. And this world knows a lot of things. We have rocket scientists, doctors, lawyers, politicians, the media elite that try and tell us what's right and wrong. But what a miracle of authority that Jesus has. It's over everything, his authority. And God will make that real in our lives. Now this authority can be recognized. Verse 23 then in Mark chapter 1, just then a man in their synagogue. So they didn't really know how much authority Jesus had. Now they're going to get a little glimpse of that authority. The man from the synagogue who is possessed by an impure, impure evil spirit starts to cry out. Now, you can't get a lower human being than somebody possessed by a demon. And obviously, he was probably famous for it. Everybody knew who he was. I mean, he was, you can't get any lower than that. But look how low he is, but look what he knows. He knows more than anyone else standing around him because there's something going on spiritually. He recognized the authority of Jesus Christ. Verse 24, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Notice he says, us. That demon knew that Jesus was going to destroy all the demonic existence in the universe at his second coming. They knew the time was coming. One of these days, it's going to happen. They knew they will be challenged. So he shouts out, I know who you are. 
You're the Holy One of God. No one else knew that. This demon saw, uh, knew it. Something is going on behind the scenes. Isn't that true? Something is going on behind the scenes today. We know it though, right? Believers know it. The world has no idea what's going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of spiritual activity going on behind the scenes. Here we get the curtain pulled back a little bit. We get a little glimpse of it, of what's going on here. This spiritual world knows exactly what's happening in our world today. Oh, well, the politicians and our government and the society has no idea. They think, oh, this is normal. We'll fix it. But behind the scenes is a spiritual reality that, that we understand the fall and what's happening, don't we? We know why we made in God we trust our national motto. We did that for a reason. These demons knew that Jesus was from Nazareth. They were watching him even when he was getting born. Remember, the demons wanted him killed. He was born in Bethlehem. And they tried to get Herod to kill all, to kill all the children. We don't want this Messiah coming out. They followed him everywhere. They knew all about him. So they know who he is. And they've been successful all through human history, destroying a lot of things. Well, there's been a lot of destruction. In fact, the good description of their job description is to kill, steal, and destroy. Bring death, and if they can steal the, the grace of God from you, they'll do it, and they want to destroy everything. So simple. Three little things. But now something different has happened. This demon realizes that judgment has landed upon them. They have the Son of God right there. And uh, they address the authority of Jesus that this world knows nothing about. You are the Holy One of God. They know who Jesus is. And so many in the human history... I mean, we have history teachers and we have documentaries on TV. They always get Jesus wrong because it has to be something that will make money. We'll tell you who Jesus is. Don't, don't read the Bible and other things. And then, by the way, there'll be a commercial and we're going to make some money too. Uh, don't, don't worry about that, but stay tuned with us. There's a huge knowledge gap in this world. They're blind Jesus comes in and removes the blinders. Don't we all kind of see what's going on in the spiritual world today? This world is dead to God. Everyone is born dead to God in Adam. We inherited it. That's why Jesus, who knows a few things, right? Said to Nicodemus, who you couldn't get anyone better than Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you'll never see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. You're dead. You've got to be born again. How can I be born again? Go back into my mother's womb? He didn't understand it. No, it comes from the Holy Spirit. You receive Jesus, you are born again. And that's, that's what happens. All of a sudden, we're alive. Now we know what Jesus is talking about. Now we can get what those demons are talking about. Once a person is given new birth, we get it. Now we have a lot to learn still. And we still have our old nature with us that won't leave us alone. We have this world still with us that won't leave us alone. That's why we have to take that 18-inch journey. Bow the knee. When you bow the knees, things start to happen. You can't resist. So we can say right along with the demons in a sense, but we say it in a good way, Jesus, you are the Holy One of God and you're in my heart. What a miracle. That door is still open today for anyone that will receive it. <clears throat> so there's a lot going on behind the scenes then. There's a lot going on now. <clears throat> this authority was, was proven. Verse 25. Jesus just said to the, the, the demon and that man, be quiet. He said it very forcefully, be quiet, come out of him. Verse 25, that impure spirit shook the man violently. He wasn't too happy about this. And, and then came out with a loud shriek. He obeyed, he had to. What kind of authority is this? Jesus can tell, can do what no one else can do. And that's still true today, isn't it? That authority is a, that's why we worship. That worship really means putting God first. We're putting his authority over us. When we worship, that's essentially what we're doing in a lot of ways. Putting him first. Because we know who Jesus is. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Is there a higher authority? No, and he's in our hearts. It's a beautiful thing. But Jesus lowered himself so he could raise us up. He lowered him. In fact, the Christmas message I always like to give is the, the whole reason he came for uh, at Christmas was to do this. He entered our world. He lowered himself so he could raise us up. 
<clears throat> and he exercises authority over this demon in here. No strain. He didn't have to perspire to do it. He just spoke it. He just spoke it. Come out of this man and, and he, he obeyed. And the man was delivered in an instant. Now we can get a good revelation <clears throat> of the authority of Christ in what's called the book of Revelation. Now in Greek, the Revelation, you may already know this, but the title for that book is Apocalypse. The Apocalypse. And what apocalypse means is things get turned upside down. When that authority enters in, what happens? It gets turned upside down. Right now, there's no apocalypse, except we have it in our hearts. He's turned our lives upside down in a good way. But when he comes to this world, it's going to be turned upside down in apocalypse. The authority of Jesus will be revealed across this whole universe. Now, I love this book of, I want to just bring up a couple things about the book of Revelation. The chapter one is an introduction. You read that very powerful introduction. Then chapters two and three are seven letters. Jesus dictates these letters. And they, they write, write these down, these letters. And these letters have a form. There's seven of them. Seven's a number of perfection. These letters show the perfect authority of Christ. Each one of these letters. It starts out, each letter begins with a proclamation of Jesus' authority. Then the second little part of the letter says, Jesus says in every letter, I know. There's nothing he doesn't know. I know. And then he lists what he knows. Then it ends with a blessing for all who overcome. Now, who are those who overcome? Anyone, doesn't matter how weird you feel or what's going on in your life. If you, know, if you belong to Jesus, you're an overcomer. You have overcome this world. And these, these are seven letters to overcomers. The first letter starts out like this. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. He's in charge of the universe. Seven's a number of perfection. There's no one higher than him. Then he says, I know. And lists what he knows. Then he writes, it ends with the overcomers. And that's you and me. Anyone that belongs to Jesus. To him who overcomes. He or she who overcomes. I will give the right. That's authority. The right to eat from the tree of life. Which is in the paradise of God. Remember we lost the tree of life. Adam lost it. You can't, you're going to die now. But now we've been given new life in Christ, haven't we? And we live forever. So it's a way of saying we now have the tree of life. I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. That's the first letter. Now the second letter starts like this. These are the words of him who's the first and the last, who died and came to life again. He has authority over life. Then he says, I know. He lists what he knows. Then the blessing for the overcomers is this. He or she who overcomes will not be hurt again by the second death. Will not be hurt by the second death. In other words, when judgment comes from his authority, we're free from it. How did that happen? He paid the price on the cross for us. And it's still open for anyone. Here's the third letter. These are the words of him who has a sharp, double-edged sword. That word of God penetrates our hearts with authority. Then he says, I know. All that he knows. Then it ends like this. This third letter. To him who overcomes. That's us. I will give some of the hidden manna. He'll give us food in our hearts we had no idea about. He'll give us some hidden manna. I'll also give him a white stone with a new name written on it. Known only to him who receives it. That's a very personal invitation. Very personal knowledge of God that we all have in our hearts. Each one of us have a personal knowledge in our hearts. Here's the fourth letter. These are the words of the Son of God whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. That's authority to bring judgment and final judgment on this world. Bronze is a, is a symbol of the, the, of a, the authority of God. He's going to bring it. Judgment is coming. Then he says, I know. And he lists all that he knows. Then it ends like this. To him who overcomes... And does my will to the end, you know, following his will, we're born again. I will give authority. He's going to share his authority with us over the nations. We will have authority over this whole world. We'll rule and reign with Christ. Isn't that true? Yeah. And I will also give him the morning star, the bright morning star that rises up. That's Jesus. We, he, he's our light in our hearts. That's just four letters. There's three more. I want to keep going here. The fifth letter's... Uh, Starts out like this in chapter 3 of Revelation. 
These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God. The Holy Spirit fullness is in us. And he holds the seven stars. Then he says, I know. And to him who overcomes, it ends this way. To him who overcomes will be dressed in white. Can you imagine having to stand before God dressed in our filthy rags of our unrighteousness? Imagine being clothed in white that God has given us. We can walk right in based on his righteousness, not ours. To him who overcomes, they'll be dressed in white. Never again will I blot his name out of the book of life. Never again. And, he will be, and I will acknowledge his name forever before my father and his angels. That is a miracle. Here's the sixth letter. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. Remember, he's the son of David, 2 Samuel 7, 11. The son is coming from you, a Messiah who will rule and reign forever. And he's going to unlock heaven for us. He's in charge. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. You have to go through the son of David. Then he says, I know. And he lists all the things he knows. Then the sixth letter ends like this. He who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. In other words, you're never leaving God's presence. You will be a pillar in the temple of God. Never again will you leave it. I will write on him the name of the city of my God. I mean, we're talking permanence here, aren't we? Forever. And in the new Jerusalem, which is coming down from my God, we belong to God in a beautiful way. Then it says this, a little extra, and I will also write on that person my name. His authority is written on us. Who's going to bug us when Jesus' name is on us? It's forever. Now here's the seventh final letter. (laughs) These are the words of the amen. What he says is true. The faithful and true witness. Isn't that Jesus? The ruler of God's creation. That's authority. Then he says, I know. Then it ends this way. To him who overcomes. That's believers. I will give the right. That's authority, isn't it? I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. We can't even describe what that's going to be like. We're going to reign and rule with Jesus. I'll give him the right to sit on on my throne just as I overcame. Didn't he overcome and ascended to heaven? Just as I overcame and sat down with my father, the father on my throne. What a relationship we will have. And that's the final seventh letter to complete what we have in Christ. Now, I don't want to do this necessarily, but let's look at how the judgment starts all the way back to Revelation 19. Just one little glimpse of the authority. John gets this vision, and it's so powerful that he falls down as a dead man. The angel has to raise him up again. Now, come on, you've got to keep writing this book out. So here's just a little part of it. Revelation 19, verse 15. Gets a vision of Jesus. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with, with which to strike down the nations. In other words, he's going to bring his judgment, his word. He has that authority. He will rule over them with an iron scepter. You know, a scepter is what the king holds. And iron means it's the weight. No world can uphold that weight. It, he's going to take over the world. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath, which means justice, of God Almighty. Verse 16, on his robe and on his thigh has this name written on it, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The authority is going to come down and land on this earth. We're all going to know about that. But look how it ends, Revelation 22. You wouldn't expect this, but it's an invitation to the entire world. Revelation 22, verse 17. Just read one little verse. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Come. Who's given the invitation? The Holy Spirit. And who's the bride? We're the bride of Christ. We're doing that today, aren't we? The Spirit and the bride is still trying to get people in. We're trying. The Spirit and the bride. The invitation is still open. The Spirit and the bride say, Come, let him who hears, let, let him who hears say, Come, whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Three times that invitation is repeated. That's how important it is. The apocalyptic invitation, it turns this world upside down and Jesus has turned our lives upside down, hasn't he? In a good way. 
We know he's the Holy One of God. And then what happens? The authority of Christ spreads. It spreads. How amazing that this gospel can spread in this world. God will see to it. Mark chapter 1 verse 27 says this. The people were, were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this new teaching with authority? They've never heard anything like that. We can be amazed as well. This whole world can be amazed if they'll just look at the teaching of Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus <clears throat> got the media's attention, didn't he? He got the media's attention and they're amazed. And the blessing spread and it will still spread today. Verse 27, even he gives orders to the impure spirits and they obey him. Jesus is the media. He stands in the middle and mediates. He pulls people in to God. He's the mediator. That's why he died on the cross. That's, he's the mediator for the entire world. So the choice is ours. We can, or anyone, the, this world can deny him or accept him. Believe or not believe. Receive or not receive. Love or hate. We live with that. We see it all around us. The demons, though, had no choice. The demons had to obey. They, they, don't, they don't have a free will. God, but that free will will, uh, will be gone for us once time is gone. Time is temporary. Right now, while there is time, there's still free will. All of humanity has been given free will, free choice to obey or believe or disobey and disbelieve. <clears throat> verse 28 tells us what happened, and it's still happening today in verse 28. News about Jesus spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. The authority of Jesus is still spreading today. May it spread more and more. I know the calendar uh, date, it's important. October 31st, the candy's important. I can't wait to get to the candy. You know what the most important calendar date in the universe is right now? The day somebody receives Jesus. Isn't that true? Because the second, the split second they receive Jesus, suddenly they're out of the natural calendar. They're eternal. Isn't that right? And they live, whoever, they live that miracle every day. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. One day that natural calendar will cease for everyone. One way or another. Isn't that true? But, but, but that natural calendar doesn't belong to us. We, we are in God's eternal calendar. We belong to him through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> in fact, remember Christmas when Jesus was born? They explained why he was born. The angels had to explain to Joseph and Mary twice. You will call him Yeshua, Yahweh. Yeshua, Yahweh is salvation. The, the hard language, English is Jesus, but it's Yeshua. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. That's what Yahshua means. Yahweh is salvation. He takes that name which has the authority of God to bring salvation. The number one environmental disaster today, I know it's, the world thinks it's global warming or whatever they want to call it. It's not global warming. It's sin. It's sin. It needs to be on the news. But it's not. Climate change in the heart is what God is looking for. Not outside. Because we can't fix that. <clears throat> but God can fix what's in our hearts. In fact, Peter shouted out like this in Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Very famous little shout. Salvation is found in no one else. For there's no other name, authority. Isn't that true? No other name under heaven, under the authority of heaven, given to all of humanity by which we must, it's a must, be saved. We're talking authority. And it's still, that amazing authority is still open to anyone who will bow. It's a miracle. Talk about climate change. That sin being forgiven in your heart, getting the, the Holy Spirit and, and becoming a child of God, that's the greatest climate change you could ever want. We need to rejoice and be glad that God has actually hidden us forever in him. And we want that to spread across our land today. Let's bow our heads in prayer as the worship team comes up. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus in thanks for the authority that came through Jesus Christ. We ask that that authority, O oh God, would spread across this land. We ask for a miracle in our families, a miracle in this nation, Lord. We cry out to you, God, for that miracle. 
Let it happen as you are the miracle-working God. Let that authority spread in Jesus' name. Amen.